Joining me now, we have Democratic strategist and former advisor to the Obama campaign, Amisha Cross, and Brendan Buck, MSNBC political analyst and former press secretary to VP candidate Paul Ryan. Welcome, guys. Good to see you here. So, Brendan, I do want to get your take to some of these early voting numbers. Nearly 12 million have voted so far. We are already seeing record turnout in North Carolina, especially also your home state of Georgia, where the first day numbers there were more than double the numbers of 2020. Republicans are promoting early voting more this cycle. But is that message reaching? Do you think early votes ultimately will be less heavily Democratic than they typically are? Well, let me start by saying this is great. It is terrific when people are participating early and getting their votes in, and I think I think that's a, a terrific development. I do think Republicans will probably vote early a little more than, than we're used to, or excuse me, than we've seen recently, uh, probably in spite of Donald Trump, who continues to get in the way of that. But there is a lot of effort being taken sort of below Donald Trump at the actual sort of uh, state party level and, and sort of the campaign um, machinery is really trying to promote it. So I do think there will be some more Republicans. Um, it's hard to tell what to make of it, so far, uh, I, I do think I do have to say, as as a Georgian, um, I think it's great that people are, are voting a lot. We, there was a lot of um, attention given to the voting laws in Georgia recently yeah. in the last few years, and a lot of people saying, including the president of the United States, that it was Jim Crow all over again. I think that's been proven to be uh, ridiculous, and I, I said so at the time. And I'm glad to see that people are out voting. It's easy to vote. It's easier to vote in Georgia than it is in Michigan. Um, what that means in the long term, I don't know. But obviously, when when there's a lot of early voting that tends to favor Democrats, we'll see if Republicans have gotten their act together to get in there early themselves. Okay. Um, Amisha, the latest Quinnipiac poll shows Trump with a seven-point lead in Georgia. Politico reports part of the reason could be gains uh, Trump has made with black men. One man said his friends described Trump as funny, entertaining, brave. He said he's impressed by Trump's business experience, adding Harris just seems to have been given everything in her career, which, by the way, is a stunningly misguided sentiment. Um, how can the Harris campaign reach black male voters in the next two weeks? Well, I think she's doing that. Um, she has already uh, showcased what her plan and economic agenda is going to look like for black men, uh, pointing directly towards um, health care concerns that are disproportionately affecting them, whether we're talking about things like colon cancers or things like prostate cancer, where they're typically diagnosed later and die earlier, in addition to um, increasing small business ownership among them, ensuring that they are, you know, part of the home buying economy personally. But a, a, a I would argue that if there is a sizable difference between this election and 2020, particularly in the state of Georgia, um, the marker you should be looking at is white women. Um, they are going to be the movers when it comes to this election cycle. They voted more in 2020 for Donald Trump than they did in 2016. And I would venture to say they're probably going to do the same thing in 2024. Black men, again, vote in a very, very insignificant divergence from black women when it comes to national politics and the Democratic Party. Both Black men and black women are the loyal group for the Democratic Party. They have been since the civil rights movement. That is not going to change anytime too soon. What she is most worried about and what the campaign is most worried about, and I think it should be, is uh, turnout. This is going mm -hmm. to be a turnout race. It's going to be a base-to-base -base turnout race. So she's got to make sure that those younger voters, that those people of color voters turn out. It's not that black men are significantly shifting to Donald Trump. That is not shown anywhere. The bigger fear is that there will be black men who will stay home, particularly younger black men. Hmm. So, Brendan, um, Harris, on her part, has faced criticism and a lot of hand-wringing from Democrats, first for not doing enough interviews and then for not doing enough rallies. NBC reports, quote, Harris appears to be OK with the collective jitters, recognizing that if Democrats fear they might lose, they're more apt to show up at the polls and help her win. Do you agree with that? I mean, 17 days out, how do you see Harris's chances as of today, right now? I mean, it's a complete uh, coin flip at this point. But I do think that fear of losing is a very good motivator. Um, there was a, a period of time where it looked like Kamala Harris was on cruise control and that she had this in the bag. Um, and apathy can be dangerous for a campaign. Um, look, I, I, I wouldn't want to be in the position that she has seen over the last few days where, or last few weeks, where polling has shifted towards Donald Trump. Like, there, there's no question that the polling has been at least, uh, you know, in, in the margins that, that matter these days, it's been moving towards Donald Trump. And so she needs to find some way to recapture the momentum. Maybe the way to do that is to uh, make sure that people understand the stakes, that this is uh, very, there's a very real chance that Donald Trump is president again very soon. And I don't think many people appreciate that and they, and they kind of take it for granted. So uh, I, I do believe in the better to be 
be uh, scared than, than overconfident. Hmm. So, Misha, we have Michelle Obama, who's going to be headlining a rally with uh, the vice president in Michigan. That'll happen next Saturday. And then there's another one in Atlanta a few days later. But why did she wait so long? Is she being underutilized or might she be the ultimate surrogate for Harris? So they're saving her firepower for the home stretch. Um, I think it's more of the latter than the former. And, and, and to be quite frank, this isn't that dissimilar from the, the 2020 election cycle when Michelle Obama came out within within weeks of uh, the actual election day to campaign for Joe Biden as well. Typically, your superstar power, uh, Michelle and Barack, are the strongest surrogates for the Democratic Party. Michelle being somebody who has the highest approval rating ever um, when it comes to a Democrat, obviously a non-elected person. But at the end of the day, we recognize what her power is on the campaign trail. And I think that she's doing this strategically being mindful that this is a very short window. Kamala Harris has not been the Democratic nominee officially for a very long time. So she was being um, strategic with the calendar she was given. But I also think that it has been proven time and time again that a lot of folks are not necessarily comfortable talking about who they're voting for or even thinking about that big, important decision until just a few weeks before Election Day. Yeah. And Brandon Harris is also rallying uh, with, to Amisha's point, former President Obama next week. And we saw his fiery remarks in Arizona yesterday. He's got another event tonight. How critical do you see both Obamas as being on the trail for Harris? Because she's just trying to energize that coalition. Are they the ones to do it for her? Yeah, I mean, it's all about motivation at this point. Look, uh, Kamala Harris had to spend uh, a lot of weeks presenting herself as a credible alternative to Donald Trump, introducing herself, um, making the case that, you know, she is not this uh, out-of-touch progressive that a lot of people feared she might be. And I think she's she's done that. The, the, the window for persuasion is starting to close. Now it's about motivating people. It's about getting people excited. It's about telling people to go and actually cast your ballot. And having superstars like that and getting people's attention, as we've talked about, you know, getting people's attention is harder than ever. Those are two people that could do that. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that's really the focus here. And of course, Barack Obama is pretty good at um, lobbying insults at, at Donald Trump. And I think a really effective way. He's the best, the best politician in the country right now. So uh, that's... That's always somebody you want on your side in the last closing weeks. Okay.